Oh, hi, I'm Mark. I used to be a senior artist at Blizzard Entertainment, and now I teach art for a living. In this new serious episode of my weekly series that I've been calling YouTube Art School, I'll be going over some mistakes that most amateur artists make along the way in their art journey, focusing on mistakes that will cost you time and time that you won't have to go on a date with your crush. I've personally made most of the mistakes that I'll be covering today in my long art journey. So hopefully you'll take the advice of an old bald man and avoid making the same mistakes yourself. Uh oh, quickly, let's get this class started. It's so classes in session, pay attention. And while you're at it, why don't you go ahead and pay the class fee of either one like or one sub? Them class ain't free, but I guarantee you'll get your money's worth. Anyways, I don't have a way to check, so let's just keep going. Today, I want to discuss eight mistakes amateur artists make in their art journey and how to best deal with them or avoid them altogether. I've compiled these mistakes over the last few months based on what I've repeatedly heard from and told my students, all based on experience, either personal or as observed in others. Usually artists with a lot of experience will be familiar with these and based on the title of the video, why would experienced artists even be watching this? But if that's you, I'll still be playing a time lapse of some recent drawings, so at least you'll have something fun to watch. Oh, uh, also, at the end of the video, I'll have some freebies for you too, so don't skip those. So let's tackle this list of mistakes in no particular order, but listed in the timeline of the video for convenience. The first thing that I ask students when they join my art program is, what's your goal? Not having a goal is the first mistake amateur artists will make. The goal can be anything. It doesn't need to be grand and it certainly doesn't need to have anything to do with money or a professional career. Having a goal is like just having a path ahead of you in your art journey. It gives meaning to everything that you do. And I ask to know my students goal to adjust my feedback for them. It can vary a lot depending on the goal. Just to take my own experience as an example, my art goal when I was younger was just to get better and more popular on DeviantArt than some artists that I admired and considered my rivals. Pretty shallow of a goal maybe, but I'm a competitive person and the competition aspect in art has always motivated me the most. Whatever your goal is though, look into the path that you'll take to get there and detail every step as best as you can, breaking down the bigger goals into smaller ones that are easier to clear. The clearer the path to the goal, the more likely you are at reaching it. Simple. Work towards something instead of doing art aimlessly. Figure out your art goal. The second mistake I see all too often is to study randomly. What you'll usually do when you're not sure of how to progress. What's more important? Just like games have tutorials teaching players to play the game by starting simple and adding on game mechanics until you know how everything works. The same goes for your art education. Most games don't throw you in expecting players to figure everything out on their own. It's just the same in art. There is a good and a bad path to take in your studies. I'll just plug my art program one last time as an example. But when I was building the curriculum, I read a lot about the science of learning. First, because I just find it fascinating, but also I wanted the best curriculum possible to speed up learning for students. What you study and in what order plays a ridiculously big part in student success. So whether it's my art program or just the last class that I posted on the channel here last week on roughly what to study if you want to become a character artist. By the way, check it out in the top right corner of the screen and down below. But whatever it is, follow a plan. Don't study randomly. By the way, big discount on my art program until the end of the month promo code in the video description. The third mistake amateur artists will often make is to rush things. Learning anything in art takes time. It's always a marathon. Always has been, always will be. The problem today is that while platform like Instagram are pretty cool for inspiration, it's also super common for people to portray something fake, something they're not. A lot of artists will follow these people. A lot of them are very popular too, so it's hard to tell sometimes. What is the actual work that went into a piece? What's the background of the artist? Have they been doing this for a long time or they just started? Or just how much of a fraud someone might be? Maybe the work was traced. Maybe it was heavily referenced. Maybe it took 300 hours, but the artist will just write something like, hey gang, just finished this 30 hour piece from imagination. What do you think? Unless you gain enough experience to be able to tell what went into a piece of art by just looking at it compared to like the artist's body of work. It's so easy to feel inadequate to the point that you'll start to cut corners yourself to try and gain similar attention. It's human nature, but don't do that. Keep your eyes on your ultimate goal, follow the right path and try not to rush things if you want to get good fast. If you rush, 
It might seem counterintuitive, but you will always progress slower. Just like the previous point emphasized, there is a better path to learn and many bad ones. The bad ones might seem easier, like they'll deliver results faster, but there's no such thing. The saying slow and steady wins the race definitely applies here. The fourth mistake I dare say most artists make is to focus on art style too much. Once again, it's understandable seeing all the cool art there is online. It's normal to want that cool style too, or to be able to draw in manga style or, you know, whatever it might be. The main thing to understand here is that style is just a symptom of a lot of experience. You develop it over time by studying first the fundamentals, then studying different artists and borrowing small techniques or recipes from each. The result over time is a mashup of a bunch of other people's styles, a combination that will be unique to you since no two artists have the same references. Kind of like customizing a cookie recipe to your specific tastes once you've practiced a lot and know it inside and out. Focusing on style too early is almost guaranteed to have a negative impact on your progress. It's like going straight for that customized cookie recipe before you've even understood what makes the basic recipe work in the first place. Keep the high level stuff for when you're high level. Not to say you can't have preferences when drawing and copy drawings in different styles for fun, but don't put too much emphasis on your own style while you're still learning the basics. It comes later. The fifth mistake everybody makes, it's to tackle an overwhelming challenge. Ever start a painting only to give up halfway or end up spending months on it while making little to no progress? Just like with your art studies, pacing yourself when doing creative work is also super important. When a piece of art is complex, usually, not always, but usually, it'll be because the art fundamentals required to make it are extensive. Just like juggling eight balls right from the start without first trying with two, three, four, etc. I remind my students all the time, Focus on creative work that matches your knowledge of fundamentals. Tackle challenges that are well within your comfort zone, like 70% within your comfort zone, and challenge yourself with the remaining 30%. If the challenge is too great, you'll keep running into walls after walls, and the whole process just becomes a chore after a while, you'll give up. Always keep a challenge if you aim to get better, but make sure that challenge is not overwhelming. The sixth mistake, and oh my god, we're almost done here. Don't seek feedback. Making art in a bubble Never asking for feedback or being too shy to ask for feedback is like constantly shooting yourself in the foot with a rocket launcher. Iterating based on external information is at the core of everything in life. Imagine if your parents, teachers, and friends never corrected your spoken language, like ever. I'm pretty sure you'd suck. Just like my English, I learned it too late in life for most people to feel okay volunteering corrections when I make a mistake. I don't do it to others either. For kids though, it's almost like we feel we should correct them when they make a mistake. And that's a lot of free feedback that I never got from my English. If everyone around me constantly picked on my English ever since I started to learn it, like they might if I were a kid, I guarantee I'd be better. Right now I'm not so bad, but I'm reading from a script, so that's why. Anyways, same thing with art. If you don't get feedback, if you don't have the help of others to point out mistakes you might not notice, mistakes that you will not notice, you're just essentially stalling your own progress voluntarily. Obviously, there are many exceptions, but just to be safe, I think that's a good rule to keep in mind. And also, spend some time searching for and being an active part of a healthy online community. Some communities suck, some are great. You just gotta shop around a bunch before you find one. I already have a private one, but I'm thinking of starting a public Discord server maybe when I reach 1 million subs in a few short months. The seventh mistake then is to forget your origin as an artist. <gasps> like losing track of what got you interested in art in the first place. Not unlike a relationship with someone, it takes some work to make it long-lasting. It doesn't just happen on its own. So many artists that end up burning out often lose that flame, lose sight of what got them excited about art initially. Was it a manga? Was it a movie? An artist that you saw online? Whatever. Make a conscious effort to sprinkle some of that into your own art journey, constantly reminding yourself why you got into it and enjoying the kind of content that got you into it. Take time to enjoy that type of art and don't forget your origin. The last mistake amateur artists often make is to not focus on growth. What? Every system of our body, or nearly every system in our body, is built to get better. You work out, you build muscles. You get exposed to people a lot, you build a stronger immune system. You study a lot, you get more knowledgeable. Maybe you've heard this before, but if something is not growing, it's dying. What I'm getting at here is that even though it might not always be the first thing that we want to do, if you focus some of your efforts on getting better at art, studying the fundamentals, studying anything art related, you'll grow as an artist, you'll get better. This might seem obvious, but it only works because when we learn something, 
when we grow as a person, our brain rewards us with some dopamine, a happy hormone. That's precisely what makes us do it again and again and again and again. You don't get that happy hormone unless you start though, unless you actually put an effort first to get better, working on those hard studies and actively seeking to learn more. If you don't, you'll regress. No growth, no happiness. It's like a slow killer doing its damage over years. Focus on growth. Focus on the internal reward you get from improving. And then finally, I guess there were nine mistakes. The last mistake is to not subscribe to my channel. If you're an artist, what are you waiting for? <laughs> and that's it for this week's class. I hope that helps. As promised, it's freebies time. In the video description, you'll find a link to one of my brush sets that you can get for free if you haven't already. There. Quite nice. And I also updated the practice files pack that I offer in my store for free with three more sets of drawings for you to practice coloring, shading, outfit designs, lighting, whatever. Grab it in the top right corner of the screen and down in the description below as well. Feel free to post your studies on social media as long as you tag me. I can't reply to everything, of course, but I check it all out and I love it. Now, make sure you have notifications enabled to be on time for next week's class. Late students will be sent straight to the...